For those of you who have never heard of Colin Cantwell, his most notable accomplishment, among many others, was creating and modeling the ships for the first Star Wars movie. This includes the Death Star, First Millennium Falcon, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, and more. I'm Sierra Dahl. Over the past 20 years or so, I've had the privilege of being a part of this remarkable man's life. In 2014, a dramatic change occurred in our lives where we had to move as a result of our rental home being renovated. For most people, this would have been challenging. However, for Colin and me, it was life-changing. Our basement was wall-to-wall -wall and floor-to-ceiling full of boxes with items from Colin's past creations. As I rummaged through the hundreds of pieces of Colin's history, among them were the plan for his design of the first IMAX theater in San Diego, then known as Omnimax, the first interactive motion control camera for Universal Studios as used in the Buck Rogers TV show, a model of the War Games movie set, the first drawing of the alien ship in Close Encounters of a Third Kind, the script for 2001 A Space Odyssey movie, the Apollo 11 flight plan of the first moon landing, and Colin's synthesizers, of which he used to play three of them simultaneously. Well, all of these stories will come later. But there was more. Over the years, Colin never wanted to talk about his film career. He just said there was something important in the basement. He failed to mention that some of these important items were in fact his actual original drawings of the first Star Wars ship concept that he sketched in 1974 while Lucas was searching for a studio for his film. Also in the basement was a script for the movie Adventures of the Star Killer, better known as Star Wars. So, guess who got to find homes for all of these hundreds of items? Not Khan. Three months later, the most expensive items were finally sold at auction, and the less expensive items all went to collectors and dealers. So, how did Colin get a job working with George Lucas on Star Wars? Well, Colin has always lived his life on his own terms. He was a master of knowing what he wanted and going after it. When he wanted to work on a particular project, his approach was to create a solution that people couldn't unthink, and then present it to them. Apparently this worked because he was involved in some of the most cutting-edge space films in the 20th century. Colin wanted to charge George Lucas a new way of building models for movies. Therefore, he constructed two ships that were made of hundreds of plastic pieces taken from model kits, such as cars, trains, etc. This later became known as kit bashing. His friend Hal Barwood was working with Lucas on the movie American Graffiti and introduced Lucas to Colin. When Lucas saw Colin's strange ships, he decided to hire him. So that was the beginning of the Star Wars film. Here is Colin describing his ships. So this is your first actual kit-bashed machine. Uh, you called it the ground superiority machine. Tell us a little bit about what this is. It's the ground superiority machine in my fantasy vision here. I got all these parts, kept putting them together. They kept speaking to me and different parts of it made other parts. And it, as you can see, can travel on treads, has rotors so that it can gain altitude off the ground, and it has combinations of all sorts of plastic model parts from probably 50, maybe even more models. 
So this is your second masterpiece here. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one. Well, this one is uh, made uh, completely from scratch. All of the uh, components of this were uh, in model drawers, some 200 model drawers, and uh, they were then assembled and glued, and uh, in all of its complexity, it was created to tell the story. For instance, uh, right here is a wealthy ph philanthropist who uh, donated his fortune to the building of this craft, which is dedicated to achieving world peace by 1860. So that's how Colin got his Star Wars job. If you'd like to have any of Colin's Star Wars prints or photos, then go to ColinCantwell.com. His website lists the only sources from which we can guarantee that you are receiving art with an authentic Colin Cantwell signature. Hope you enjoyed the show. Keep your eye open for future videos, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.